there is something so pure and special about children. Because when we're young, we're usually only focused on ourselves, doing what makes us happy, whether that's playing dress up, dancing, watching our favorite shows. But the older we get, the more we start to care what other people think. I remember being in Target once with my dad, running into one of my school friends, trying to hide the fact that I was about to purchase a Barbie because I was in like fourth grade and Barbies weren't cool anymore. I think that's why Jesus said that we must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven because we need to die to our old selves and be made new in Christ Jesus, which includes dying to our old mindset and having a Galatians 1.10 one. Hey guys, my name is Celeste and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I managed to live for God even though I live in the world. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and if you're interested, I have a free ebook on how to grow your relationship with God linked down below. We've all feared man at one point or another, but I want to ask you, what can man do to you? Judge you? Unfriend you? Kill you? Whose judgment matters most? Someone's false judgment, which was made based on what they perceived on the outside? Or God's righteous judgment, which he made by examining your heart? If they unfriend you, remember that you have a friend in Jesus. John 15, 13 says, Greater love no one has than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. You have a friend who laid down his life for you. I'm going to read Luke 12, 4 through 5. It says, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Even though we often say we believe in heaven and the gift of eternal life, we often fail to look at life from eternity's perspective. And I think that's because to most of us, the concept of eternity can still be so hard to grasp. But as a result of not looking at life from eternity's perspective, we tend to gratify our life here on earth. Meaning we fear man and death more than we fear God. Because even though we believe that we'll receive the gift of eternal life, we act as though this is the only life we're going to live. Look at life from the perspective of eternity. Because when everyone passes away, their opinions and their unrighteous judgment will pass away with them. But God and his righteous judgment will remain. Listen to verse 5 again. It says, Fear him who after your body has been killed has authority to throw into hell. It's important to recognize that God has that authority. He is the creator, he is the head, and he is in charge. We submit to God because he has an authority over us. Who you fear is who you end up submitting to, and that's who you end up serving. So when you live in fear of man, you're giving them an authority over you. You say, I'm scared of you judging me, I'm scared of you unfriending me, I'm scared of you killing me, so I'm going to do whatever I can to please you. In Genesis 22, we see Abraham fearing man. He told everyone that his wife was his sister because he was scared of being killed. Since his wife was so beautiful, he was fearful that they would kill him so they could get his wife. So he ended up lying about his wife being his sister so he could please man. Proverbs 9.25 says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. A snare is a trap. Satan will often use fear to hold us back from following God. I think that switch of going from fearing man to fearing God is being careful of what you retain, what you keep with you. I would be lying if I said there weren't times where I would post something and think, oh, I wonder what this person will think, I wonder what that person would think. And in those moments, I'm worried about what everyone else around me has to say about my picture, but I never ask myself, what does God have to say about it? And that right there is the problem. Who cares what other people think? When I lived for the world, it was accustomed to me to always try to be cool. And let me tell you, it is so hard going from a make sure everyone likes you mindset to following Jesus, who said, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. <laughs> when you read that, it's like, whoa, 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 what do you mean hate me? Like, don't you mean I'm going to be loved? 
I thought everyone loved God. All the celebrities mention him in their speeches. Everyone celebrates Jesus on Easter. But you never realize how much Christians are truly hated until you openly become one for yourself. So we need to hold firmly to God's word instead of holding on to other people's opinions. In Genesis 22, we see a time where Abraham feared God. God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. And he did it. He didn't care about what his wife would think. He wasn't worried about people looking at him like he was crazy. He wasn't worried about human judgment. All he cared about was serving God and pleasing him because that is who he feared. It says in Psalms that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The wisest thing we could ever do is submit to God. Because living in fear of those who can kill the body and after that do no more is just so foolish. Why fear someone whose power is just as limited as yours? You see, the hardest part about being a Christian is the persecution. As Christians, we must suffer for Christ's sake. I mean, look at all that Jesus went through. The people of Jerusalem found no proper ground for a death sentence, yet they still asked Pilate to have him executed. In 2 Timothy 3.10, Paul said, You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, sufferings, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from them all. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Remember, man only has as much power as God gives. Man is nothing without God. God is our authority, not man. So in order to make that switch from fearing man to fearing God, I encourage you to let God's word dominate over your thinking process. It's when we meditate on these stories and hold them dear to our hearts that we remember how good our God truly is. I want to encourage you all to hold on to Galatians 1.10. Paul said, if I were trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. When we let God's word dominate over our own thinking process, it helps us see life from the right perspective, eternity's perspective. My purpose here on this earth is to glorify God. And I can't do that if I'm living in fear of man. I will never be able to reach my full potential if I'm constantly worried about what those around me are thinking of me. Paul reached so many people by sharing the gospel. Imagine if he was disobedient and lived in fear of man. Those people wouldn't have gotten the good news. Fear is meant to hold us back. Satan wants you to fear so you stay in a bubble. But as Christians, we have to go through persecution. But in the end of that, there is a reward. Not only a reward here on earth, but we get to spend eternity with our Father in heaven. So hold the scriptures dear to your heart so that you can live them out. In John 16, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart for I have overcome the world. Dealing with persecution is tough, but the best part about it is that it shows us that we're more like Jesus. We must be doing something right if we're being hated in the same way that he was for Christ's sake. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and please comment down below what you would like to see from me in the future. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!